As has been established many times, game development is hard. Developing complex systems with graphics, AI, physics, environments, cutscenes, and dialogue, while expecting it all not to crash is nigh impossible. Nevertheless, what's proven even more difficult, especially in recent times, is ensuring a smooth experience on PC due to the sheer amount of hardware and configurations to optimize for. It could be a big budget title or the port for a classic. Some legendary titles have been downright horrible on PC. Let's look at 15 of them here. Dead Space Remake Despite its greatness, Motive Studios' Dead Space Remake had serious issues when launching on PC. There are the usual stutters and major performance issues at 4K resolution. Unfortunately, DLSS makes things worse due to the iffy variable rate shading, which is baked in, causing environments with shadows, read a huge chunk of the game, to look muddy. Performance has improved with patches, but some players are still reporting frame drops and even freezes. Star Wars Jedi Survivor Two problematic PC ports published by Electronic Arts in a row? Say it ain't so. Respawn Entertainment isn't immune from optimization issues either, sadly. With Jedi Survivor having frame rate drops particularly in cutscenes, stuttering, even stuck on loading screens, screen tearing, bugged HDR, crashes, and so on. If you're one of the few who played it via the EA app, then the game could fail to launch, though at least that's fixed by trying again after some time. Again, patches have helped, but there's still work remaining. You're in trouble. <laughs> Redfall Arcane Austin had hiccups with Prey on PC, but Redfall is a whole other level of terrible. Performance is poor, and DLSS does very little to help. Even if you somehow get it running at 1440p and above 60 frames, the quality isn't the best, and there are frequent dips. Worst of all is just the general state of the game with numerous bugs, glitches, crashes, and fundamental design flaws that make it an absolute chore to endure. The Last of Us Part 1 would you have ever guessed that a Naughty Dog title would ever be on the same list as Redfall? Nevertheless, The Last of Us Part 1 earned that notoriety when it launched on PC. First, there's the compiling shaders part, which took some players over an hour and still didn't complete. Then there's the broken hair, or characters looking like they emerged from the shower in cutscenes. Performance issues, crashes, and stutters are just the cherry on top of all of this. The Callisto Protocol between high system requirements, Striking Distances Studios CEO proudly proclaiming crunch, and other shenanigans, there was some concern for the Callisto Protocol at launch. The good news is that it looked phenomenal on PC. The bad news? It stuttered like crazy, ran terribly, and crashed, being near unplayable for many. These issues were apparently due to a clerical error, with the wrong file being patched. Take that for what you will, but it's since improved significantly. Batman Arkham Knight One of the most anticipated superhero sequels of all time also became one of the most infamous PC releases. Batman Arkham Knight was praised heavily on PS4 and Xbox One, and it ran beautifully. However, the PC version suffered from frame rate issues, like a 30 frames per second cap which saw massive drops, glitches, stuttering, low-resolution textures, crashes. Such were the issues that it was pulled from sale. After releasing in June, an interim patch wouldn't arrive until August, providing some frame rate options and graphical features with other fixes. Metal Gear Solid 2 To say that Metal Gear Solid 2's PC port ruined a classic game would be somewhat of an overstatement. It was still pretty bad though, with poor optimization leading to severe issues on some graphics cards. Then there's the terrible controls and substandard visuals, Thankfully, fans will have a chance to experience the version from the HD Collection Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 1 releases this fall for modern platforms and hopefully PC. Horizon Zero Dawn Guerrilla Games' Horizon Zero Dawn kicked off PlayStation's recent initiative to bring its exclusives to PC and was very successful, selling almost 2.4 million units in about 8 months, which is surprising considering how utterly broken it was, with crashes, when compiling shaders, stuttering, and constant frame rate drops. Frequent patches brought it up to a better state, especially with the help of Nix's software. However, its launch state was unbelievable for Sony exclusive at the time, not so much now, unfortunately. Street Fighter 2, 1992 
Street Fighter VI is out and runs pretty well on PC, but there was a time when Capcom was less thorough with its PC ports. Street Fighter II was released on MS-DOS in 1992 and is considered the worst version, whether it was the jumps where characters appeared to be escaping into orbit or the horrible sound, it was awful. Since it was the good old days, there were no patches, you just had to buy a better version. Saints Row 2 CD Projekt was responsible for porting Saints Row 2 to PC, but it's not the studio you're thinking of. It was CD Projekt Black, and Volition had very little involvement. The results were as bad as they were hilarious, with the game speeding up if you run it on a CPU with a higher clock speed than 3.2 GHz, the 32 frames per second cap, crashes, poor audio quality, awful performance, and various other issues cemented it as one of the worst ports ever. While a modern would fix many of these issues and even get hired by Volition, he would pass away before releasing the official revitalization patch. Wolong Fallen Dynasty Koei Tecmo's PC ports tend to be hit or miss, and Wolong Fallen Dynasty was perhaps the worst yet at launch. Stuttering, crashes, bugs, and frame rate issues even on the lowest settings at 1080p were just the start. The PC port also suffered from mouse sensitivity issues, where the camera would be unresponsive regardless of settings. While that was fixed and performance improved for some, others still report stuttering in high CPU usage. Mortal Kombat X As good as Mortal Kombat 11 ran at launch on PC, Mortal Kombat X was the complete opposite. Ported by high voltage software, it crashed frequently, had awful key bindings, and even suffered from a bug that would delete progress. Netcode was also horrendous, and eventually NetherRealm would drop high voltage in favor of QLOC for the XL version, with extensive testing done to improve the online experience. Grand Theft Auto 4 when Grand Theft Auto 4 launched, it received extensive critical acclaim and more than some mixed opinions from fans, who wondered if the hype was justified. However, the latter could agree the PC port was absolutely bonkers. Its optimization was such that those with lesser hardware had better performance, while others with stronger setups struggled to maintain 60 frames per second at high settings. There's also the whole Games for Windows debacle, which made it a chore to install. And once the platform shut down, Rockstar had to pull the Steam version and patch out support. Deadly Premonition, the director's cut. Deadly Premonition isn't to everyone's taste, and that's fine, but the PC port is just bad. There are the usual bugs, but you'll also have to contend with crashes, progression blockers, and limited graphical options. One player even reported the controls on their right analog stick being changed you'll need some community fixes, which must run in compatibility mode to get through it all. Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition As much flack as Dark Souls Remastered received, Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition was just one questionable decision after another. Atrocious keyboard and mouse support, a 30 frames per second lock to go with a locked internal resolution, low-res textures, and worst of all, games for Windows Live. If you get the right fixes, it can look pretty great, but the Prepare to Die edition has been delisted and is no longer on sale. And that brings us to the end of the video. A quick request, we upload new videos every single day, and if you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing. It really, really helps us out. Also, don't forget to enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon so that you can receive daily video updates. Thanks for watching.